I was sitting in my library one night and it felt like the house was moving. And I turned to my husband and I said to him, do you feel the house moving? And he said, it's not the house, Carol, it's you. The Movement Disorder Centre at Toronto Western Hospital is actually the biggest movement disorder centre in North America. We have seven full-time movement disorders experts that each cover a different uh, component or a different piece of the research puzzle from the clinical side, from the diagnostic and therapeutic side, to the understanding of brain function through electrophysiology, to uh, pharmacology. It's depressing. It's because uh, you can't even do the simple things of life, go and do some grocery shopping or some clothes for the kids or whatever it may be. And uh, it comes a point where you just don't want to go out. I don't think you can ask intelligent research questions without understanding the disease that is, as it impacts on living patients and patients that uh, have to deal with the disability on a daily basis. Just using a small electrode to measure the activity of your brain. Anything there? Have a bright light. We've now treated about 600 patients uh, in Toronto with deep brain stimulation for Parkinson's, and it has been transformative in their lives. We've had people who uh, were not able to uh, work, uh, who were not able to feed themselves, dress themselves, and we've been able to place uh, deep brain stimulation electrodes in these patients, and in many cases, we've been able to make them just about normal with respect to their motor function. And so it's really had a major impact. Tell us if you feel something eh, before we see it. Easier, right? It's not so stiff. Can you feel it? Yes. Our hopes are that we're going to do that much better in the future with drugs, but right now we don't. And this is where deep brain stimulation really has provided almost a godsend to the patients that uh, uh, benefit from it. Well, the impact after surgery was um, night and day, probably. I could run, actually, I could do, start jogging again and um, playing with my children, functioning more as a father and a person in society, right? The focus mostly on neuroimaging or brain imaging. We are able to detect abnormalities in certain parts of the brain that are responsible for Parkinson's disease. We are really on the cutting age of technology, and that's for sure. So we can ask questions about how the disease progresses within the dopamine system and how it changes and how the earliest manifestations develop. Just go for a walk or uh, window, window shopping or uh, things uh -huh. like that and she, she enjoys. The clinical work has certainly helped me see that there are areas in later stage Parkinson's disease that are often missed. Because in Parkinson's disease, we're always thinking about keeping the patient moving, keeping them walking. In later stages, that focus often needs to be shifted somewhat because we have to think about, are we impacting their mood or their thinking by giving them so much medication to keep them moving? And what is important to the patient? When yeah. the family is around, she's always happy. Yeah. She does sleep. She recognizes them. Oh, yes. yes. And there are very few palliative care programs. Dr. Miyazaki has developed one of the first in the world. In the short term, my hope is that we continue to have the success we've had in expanding the envelope, pushing those boundaries of knowledge, questioning established dogma, trying to think of new ways to approach the illnesses that we care for. And I think that what we can do with these patients is to really improve their symptoms and this uh, in turn gives them a fresh new outlook in life. So all, it, it really is a transformative change. Many of our patients say that we've given them back their lives. In the longest term, 
I think we're going to see a better understanding of the underlying biology. We're going to understand what's happening in the cells, and why are the cells damaged, why are they dying, and how can we step in to prevent them from continuing to progressively die. The ultimate hope, of course, is that we find a cure for Parkinson's disease and we find the answer about what causes or starts the illness. And that would lead to implications not only for Parkinson's disease, but for a vast array of illnesses such as Alzheimer's, Huntington's disease, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis or Lou Gehrig's disease. You leave an appointment with Dr. Lang feeling like, yes, you know, we're, we're, we're a team here. There's a, there's a whole team behind me helping me feel well and giving me the strength to carry on and get on with my life and not to give up.